Today we're looking at the WWE Elite Greatest Hits Legends line that is Target exclusive, as you guys can see here, man. Again, this is Target exclusive, so the only place you can get it is Target. You cannot get these at Ringside Collectibles, where I'd usually tell you to go, but today we're looking at this set, man. I'm pretty excited for this set. Very random. You know, Bruno San Martino did get cut from this wave, as we'll, of course, see on the back of the packaging. You know, I did check my stores. I feel like one or two are going to slip through the cracks. I don't know how. I don't know where. I feel like there's going to be one put in one of these packagings, and it's going to be super rare. Even though that figure's coming on the line, I think if you got a sealed product in one of these boxes with that figure in there and the stand and stuff. I mean, that's good. That's gonna happen. Somebody tag me if you see that. That'd be nutty. Nonetheless, man, we're taking a look today at the Legends Greatest Hits line featuring British Bulldog, Terry Funk, Ultimate Warrior, and Honky Tonk Man. Now, originally, I have owned three of these four figures in their original state, which is what the Greatest Hits line is, and the Greatest Hits Legends is taking previously released Legends figures that Mattel has produced already and giving them the double-jointed treatment, which is what we have here today, man. I'm actually pretty excited. Not that excited, but I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to see what we got here, man, as we're going to go through, man. I found these at my Target not too long ago on our toy hunt, but here's the British Bulldog right here, looking good, Heart Foundation. This is the only one in the set that I've never personally owned in my collection, so I'm excited to add this to the collection for sure. And then we have Terry Funkums, rest in peace to the Legends, ECW Championship Terry Funk in there. Looking pretty damn good. I like this figure in its original state, and I like the stripes. One thing that's awesome about this Ultimate Warrior is they have the purple strap WWF title, which looks really, really clean men on card, but this originally was a Walmart flashback exclusive. This was an original Legends figure, and this one was the Elite 40 Terry Funk, I do believe. Or maybe it's Elite 41. And then we do have the Honky Tonk Man, who originally was a RetroFest GameStop exclusive figure here in the bodysuit. So that's all good stuff, man. That's all good and dandy, but we gotta crack these guys out, find out what they're all about, and then we're gonna rank this set from worst to best, because you guys know I gotta do my ranking. I gotta rank it, man. Gotta get my rankings in every single time. But let's shut the hell up. Dive into the Legends Greatest Hits line. Pop them out of the packaging and find out if they are any damn good. So taking a closer look at the Greatest Hits Legends, man, you guys know how these things roll. We're going to take each figure one by one. I'll let you guys know the accessories and whatnot have you and all the stuff going on with it, man. So starting out first, let's get into the British Bulldog. Now, I'm noticing some unique stuff here because I think these arms are new, man. Am I tripping? I think I fell down a flight of stairs. These are new arms, man. I swear, they're more puffy. They're not as, like, ripped up as I was expecting. These are new arms. I don't think we've seen these yet on these double-jointed arm figures we've seen for a while now. They're not as cut. They kind of have a little bit more. This is arms they need to put on Kevin Owens, man. If these are not on the new Kevin Owens, you can fight me in heaven. Assuming you're going there. <laughs> But he also has these armbands on here, which are really nice. He's got a royal blue color and then a black colorway. Him and Warrior, I mean, they're basically in, like, opposite, like, worlds collide attires right here. One of them's one of them's one side, one of them's the other. But, uh, you know, these aren't rotational. These are, like, the old school bands right here, but they flail out horrifically. I'm gonna be honest with you. If you guys actually want to fix this, you can't fix it. If you hit these with a hairdryer, get them real, like, flimsy, I'd hit it with, like, a hairdryer for maybe, like, 15 seconds. Not too long, because these are real small and rubbery. Hit them with a hairdryer for 15 seconds each and then run them under cold water holding them in the position you want like flat down and they will stay that way and they won't be flailing out all weird like he's running now if he's running then what are we talking about but you get the point he's got white wrist tape he's got the Stone Cold Steve Austin torso on there feels really good in hand actually not on ball joints unfortunately but he does have nice gear I actually like this gear a whole lot and it's got the same pattern on the front and back which I really appreciate nice size thighs and then he does have the same knee pads to match the gear of course you know representing up front there he's got red boots that did not paint the laces, so that's kind of annoying, but, you know, you're supposed to be wearing the boot tassels or covers right there. They do have the royal blue at the top with the white underneath, and then he does have the white laces. He's got the Kurt Angle style boots on. Now, again, I don't have the OG of this figure, and I don't think I'd be able to find it if I did have it, but he does come with some damn good accessories. He comes with fisted hands and a pair of mic holding hands, but he also comes with this heart foundation vest, which looks so good, man. Look at this. Great cloth goods. It's got, like, the pleathery look to it. And one thing that's just so awesome that I think is a nice detail. Stitching this little panel of silver in here on the front, right behind the front pleathery, you know, face of the jacket or the vest. Pretty sure this is just a jacket with the sleeves cut off, uh, inevitably, or maybe he had just a straight up vest. Doesn't matter. It looks like a zipper in the way they did it. I know they've done that in the past, but it's still really cool and unique anyway, and I love this. Great looking jacket, iconic jacket, great graphic, great stuff here, man. This is clean as hell. Next up, we do have Terry Funkathy. Now, these are the OG arms, like the Seth Rollins arms, the arms we've seen a whole lot 
spot that they use on a lot of guys with these double jointed arms. He does have his removable headband, which is nice. I really wish they could get that bandana pattern in there, but head sculpt's not bad. I never thought it was a horrible head sculpt. It's not my favorite. I certainly like the Ultimate Edition head sculpts better, you know, the Terry Funk Ultimate from the Coliseum Collection. But this is a nice torso. I wish they would use this torso for more guys. Hit the camera accidentally, but white wrist tape, white hand tape. He does have this, like, very grungy attire going on. I like this attire a lot, though. Wish we could get some cloth goods in here, but again, it's just a repeat of the Elite 41 funk. I don't think it's Elite 40. I'm pretty sure it's Elite 41. It's the same series as Lita, Dean Ambrose, Ryback was in that wave, Terry Funk was in that wave. You guys know what I'm talking about, or maybe you don't. But he's got the stripes in there, black knee pads, all the good stuff going on. Very nice stuff going on. Then he does have the black boots with the white, the white outsoles on there, which is very clean. It's not the most exciting figure ever. He's not, like, crazy toyetic, but still damn good. Now, he does come with the modern, or the more modern, I guess I should say, and it's kind of crazy. This was, like, 15, 16 years ago now, which makes me vomit in the floor. But we do have the ECW Championship. It's got the strap details in there, which is really nice. But this is a championship I don't have a lot of, so I'm glad to have another one here. But I still like it. I like the inclusion here. A lot of guys you can put this on, so this is pretty damn good. Got a little something special going on there, young man. I actually liked this title back in the day. Hate me for it. And then he also comes with his branding iron, which he did come with originally. So this is nice. You know, it's got the nice handle. It's a black color. Nothing, I mean, nothing too crazy. But you can brand the hell out of guys and just burn them for life. Mark them up for life. That's the way to do it. And he also comes with white tape fisted hands that have white pegs, which are nice, and mic holding hands for weapon holding and wielding and mic holding and wielding. And I'm, I'm going to shut the hell up now. So what's dope about the Ultimate Warrior figure, man, is that the torso was stuck. God. But it's really that we get this first time in the line championship, and that, I don't think we've ever seen the purple strap before, so that's pretty nice. And the color's pretty accurate, you know, I mean, it's a little bit maybe saturated, like pinkish purple, but it still looks good. I like it. I'm glad to have this in the line. I know, you know, a lot of people are going to be excited for this. It looks pretty damn good to me. Maybe not absolute perfection, but it gets the job done for the most part. And then he also comes with the iconic scepter that does break, so you can break it off into people's asses. <laughs> I didn't mean... <laughs> I meant you could hit somebody in the head with it and break it. I meant break it over the top of somebody's head. But you do get that, and that came with the OG figure as well. And what's weird is we've actually seen this exact attire like four times from Mattel, I'm pretty sure. We saw it in a basic, we saw it in an elite, we saw it in this elite, and I want to say we saw it in another basic, like they've done it twice in basic form, maybe? I can't remember. Or maybe a battle pack? It was a battle pack with Sting, wasn't it, or something like that. I don't freaking know. But the head sculpt looks good. The paint looks good. I actually like this gear. This is one of the most iconic warrior gears ever, I swear. I like it a lot. Red, white, and blue. You know, you got the tassels over here. Same tassels, pretty much, as, as Bulldog over there, but these don't rotate. But then down here on his knees, he has the rotation kind, so you have those warrior logos in blue. Red, white, and blue. You know, America. You guys know I love that. Looks good. Warrior mask on the back. American flag. The tape looks good. The wristbands. I mean, this is clean, man. Clean, clean warrior right here. I'm not gonna fight you on that one, Bradley. And I love the logos on the boots. I always like that for warrior. Not my favorite guy of all time or anything like that, but I can appreciate a toyetic man. I don't know why that sounded weird. And last but not least, we have the Honky Tonk Man. I almost said the Honky Tonk Man, man. Like, last but not least, we have the Honky Tonk Man, man. And he has his jumpsuit on there, or his, whatever the hey, his body suit. What I don't know what you want to call that, but you have Presley right there. It looks like Presley. It's probably himself, but head sculpt looks pretty good. This does not look to be the same head sculpt we saw in his last figure, but I don't remember this graphic being on the last version of Honky Tonk Man, but we've gotten quite a bit of Honky Tonk Mans. Almost did it again. I almost said man again. God dang. But the blue looks pretty good. Underneath here, you know, you can't Velcro this off, and he does have the light blue gear under there, but he does have his light blue and red gear on there, which we've seen before, obviously. I like this torso choice for Honky Tonk. I really wish they'd use this for a lot of other guys, but he does have, like, that standard Seth Rollins arm mold on there, which isn't the biggest deal. White wrist tape. He's got his white boots in here. The bodysuit is just phenomenal. I think they did a really good job on this, but again, we have seen this, but you can fully remove it. I'm not going to do it now, just because I don't really want to have to get it back on there, but I did want to show you guys the gear. So, this is the gear that he's got on there, which is the same gear we've seen before, but outside of that, we do have a guitar, and I'm not going to break this away. Every time we get this guitar, I always say that they need to make a version of the guitar that is not breakaway. Give us a version that's breakaway, and then give us a version that's not breakaway, because once you break this apart, it's going to be really hard to stay together, but I'm going to keep these strings on here and everything. I did it with Greg the Hammer Valentine as well, and you, of course, can do what you want with those figures there, but this is, uh, this is, it's okay. It's not bad, and I do like to bust a guy over the head with a damn guitar, but yeah, man, I just, I, I really would like to see one that's fully, you know, together, because we've seen so many that are breakaway. And look at this, off screen, I have the Greg the Hammer Valentine one, and I left it the same, and these guys are the exact same, so I'm just not, I'm not, I'm over it, man. I got 2,700 of those guitars. I don't need to bust nobody over the head right now. I just want one that doesn't bust people over the head with. That didn't even make sense. And then he comes with mic holding hands and the Kawhi 
Kawhi Leonard ricochet entrance handshaking style hands or whatever the hell. All right, man, it is time to rank this set from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Now, again, just because a figure comes in at the bottom doesn't mean it's not any good whatsoever. And just because a figure comes in at number one doesn't mean that it's without any faults whatsoever. I mean, we've seen all these figures previously, so it's not the hardest thing in the world to, to rank here, man. But my opinion might shock some people. Let me know your ranking down below and what you think of mine, man. Coming down at the bottom of mine is going to be the Honky Tonk, man. I feel like that's kind of a hot take, at least for me personally. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people see the bodysuit and they automatically think good figure. Like, I like the head sculpt. It's solid. I like the, the gear and the stuff going on. I just, I, I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't really know. It's kind of tough. This is a pretty good greatest hits wave, man. He doesn't feel as good in hand as the rest of the set. Maybe that has something to do with it, but I've never been a huge Honky Tonk Man fan, even though I do respect him heavily. So yeah, I went Honky Tonk at the bottom. Coming in at number three, I went with the Funkadactyl himself. We went with Terry Funk now. Rest in peace to the legend. Solid figure. I like the addition of the double jointed arms and stuff like that. I, I like the figure a lot, man. I think it's a really good classic Terry Funk, and I just enjoy that figure so much. Kind of gives me nostalgic feels a little bit. I just appreciate that one a lot here. And then coming down to two and one, I really wish there was a Build-A-Figure in this set. I know why they didn't do it. Like, how cool would it be if they put classic Build-A-Figures in this set right here? How sick as hell would that be? Number two, I went with British Bulldog. I like it a lot. I just don't think it's as good or toyetic as number one, which is going to come down to Ultimate Warrior, who is a terrific just action figure guy in itself. I mean, how do you even contend with Ultimate Warrior, man? I mean, he's just a walking toyetic monster, and I'm not the biggest Warrior fan of all time. I've said it again and again. But at the end of the day, he's just hard to compete with when it comes to, to stuff like this. Now, I thought this was pretty solid. My overall thoughts of the greatest hits is, is cool. I think it's a great way to get new collectors in that missed out on these originally. I love the addition of the double jointed arms. I think it, because of the upgrades to the figures themselves with the head sculpts being removable and the double jointed arms and different things of that nature, it's very smart by Mattel because people that have the originals and just want a better figure are going to search these out. And I think that's genius, man. Just such good stuff and to get you an opportunity to get these figures yourselves that you missed out on previously, man. So that is my story and ranking of the Greatest Hits Legends way, man. But that is going to wrap up the video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below as well as a huge shout out to our patron members of the MDT YouTube channel. Love and appreciate you guys so very much, man. Love those guys so very much for all of their support and believing in me and what I do. So I greatly appreciate you so very much, man. That, that a day does not go by where I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one. I'll catch you guys later. See you next time and I'll catch you later. I almost said catch you peace, which would just make no sense, which now that I think about it, it kind of sounds fire if you were just like, catch you peace. Still sounds stupid.